Hi, good to see you. I believe we left off after um, getting the only forced fail in the game, which is in the Duke's archive, where Seath, the non-immortal dragon who's now immortal, decided to show us how immortal he is by killing us. This could be kind of a difficult point in the game, because it's a <laughs> weirdly difficult puzzle to deal with this problem. You see this guy over here? Um, he's incredibly weak. Every other snake man, incredibly tough, but they have to make sure that um, any player will be able to just kill him and get the key. Which is uh, tragic, frankly. Like, they're a reasonably tough fight, generally speaking. With this guy? Nope. Just goes down like a pile of bricks. It's also kind of <laughs> bizarre, because I've just been watching Breaking Bad with my friend all day, so to suddenly be in the one part of the game that is full of nothing but crystals is a bit weird. These guys uh, are more of a threat than I thought, because I'm out of practice at parrying. You're my friend? Astonishing. I mean, I could go back to calling you my flatmate, if you like. You know, you could take that downgrade and live with it. Okay, let's try that again. Also, notice this guy does not respawn. Um, all of the snakes in this place respawn, but I think he spawns somewhere else once he's uh, been defeated in valiant combat. I'm just gonna blast these guys until I get the skills back. The real risk with them is actually that shoulder thrust. It does a surprisingly large amount of damage and it's really hard to predict. Case in point. There we go. I definitely think it was a good idea to have switched over to the Velka's Rapier at this point. We've been using the basic sta uh, starting dagger that we had for the whole game. But um, the Rapier has multiple damage types and also has a nice bit of scaling. So that we can get uh, strength, dexterity and... Oh, by the way, time for a horrible noise. I love the little detail that he wraps his neck around the, the lever to try and pull it a bit harder. It sounds like the music that you hear in the background when you are in a temporary exhibit at a museum. Which is like, a, like an art museum. So these guys are actually running in fear from those entities called the Picasso. They're not very difficult to fight. Um, but these guys are afraid of them, I guess. They'll climb up here and then if they get to the top, they will be a nuisance later on when we try and come through here. So instead of just letting them get away with it, let's try and blast them down. <laughs> okay, so I think what happened is I did enough damage to knock him off. Hi, Lisa. I did enough damage to knock him off the fucking uh, rail and then he... Um, wasn't dead, and then he landed on me, and landing on me killed him. I do love the way they climb. They are the world's most adorable snake men. Admittedly, there's not a very large category of snake men for them to be the best in, but still. I think the Picasso might be weak to damage. They're not very tough, um, but they do a lot of damage themselves, which is why people are a bit wary of them, and presumably why the snake men are ter terrified of them. Either that, or they've never actually tested them in combat before, and it's a bit of a... I guess trial by fire, by which I mean blue brain lasers. It is actually implied that um, these, these things used to be uh, women who were abducted either by Seath or through some kind of... Um, one of the various weird religions in the settings sending sending them off here, and uh, Seath has been experimenting on them as part of his many varied and strange experiments that he's up to stuff about. What exactly he's trying to do is anyone's guess. Possibly he's trying to create um, more dragons of the weird kind of dragon that he is, because he doesn't have legs. Um, he is an entirely 
legless dragon. He's instead got three tentacles. As you can see, the Picassos have some tentacles. So perhaps he's trying to take snakes and women and create dragon. After all, there are a couple of mentions in the game of uh, snakes being seen thematically within the kind of like mystic mysticisms of the game world as a uh, an imperfect dragon. Yeah, um, that that's kind of what is going on here. Except that if you reach a bit, you can you can reasonably uh, infer that he was trying to create more dragons since he's the only one of them now. Mind you, he seems to be okay. He seems to be able to breed reasonably well with uh, the gods of Anor Londo. So these two are actually neutral and won't attack you. Um, if you kill them, they drop miracles. So we're going to do that because I am an acquisitive bitch. I might as well not waste my magic, actually. I'm not sure if they become aggressive after you attack them. They seem to be just you running away. Well, I mean, yeah, that's kind of the point of Dark Souls, really. Let's have fun interpreting things. Baby Gamer's first guide to narrative literacy. So I like to believe that these two um, have managed to cling to their faith and that that's why they have retained enough of their selfhood that they haven't become these sort of like tentacle monsters because uh, they drop those miracles. And if we look at those miracles, I believe that gives us a bit of information about them. Was it these? I can't. I, I straight up don't remember what they dropped. I think it was those, which doesn't tell us anything about them. I can't. Rem There's definitely something somewhere that has a hint about uh, what those things are and, and how they happened. You seem to be making a habit of this, my old man. You seem to be enjoying being in multiple cages. He doesn't uh, give you a choice. <laughs> Normally they do. Normally he says, will you try and free me? And you can say, yes, or no. I guess that's just kind of the attitude of a stuffy old academian. Of course this person is going to... Yeah, no, I think that's... I think there's another connection about to who, whom they are and what their deal is um, beyond just that one, but I can't remember what it is. Oops, he blocked it. Okay. This bit's actually kind of dangerous, because dealing with two of these guys at the same time can be difficult. And uh, having someone else throwing bolts at you is not easy. One of them, however, we can deal with easily. Oh my god, it survived. I love the range on this thing. I've gotten really used to using the dagger. But yeah, um, I think it's generally just accepted and understood that the Picassos used to be the Maidens of Guinevere, which presumably are, um, you know, worshippers of Guinevere rather than uh, gods themselves of Anor Londo, but you never know. Chain is curling backwards, so we're good. I always forget which key is which, because there's like four archive keys, but that's the one that lets us in at the top. Also, note the uh, snake skin that they've draped over this thing. I like the idea that the uh, the snake men themselves are sort of cargo culting to some extent. I can't imagine why else they would drape snake skin over that. Uh, I suppose, I mean, snake skin decor is highly fashionable in certain circles, so maybe that's why. Now, as we work our way back up, there's a couple of useful things to grab hidden in some of these cells that we should be able to get think I might have lost, I think I might have missed a key somewhere, or uh, I just haven't got to where it is yet. Hi. It's not the politest response to someone letting you out of prison. Or I guess given all the crystals, maybe these guys are trapped in prison. Yeah, maybe it's all just hot glued on to try and squeeze a few extra dollars out of, um, 
whoever decides to buy it. So this is this is real snakeskin? Like, wow. That's probably pretty valuable material, right? Yeah, it didn't just, like, drop off of my body or anything. You can't parry that shoulder charge, incidentally. That's why I was waiting for him to attack me in a way that I could parry. This guy is fighting smart rather than hard. I think this just gives you a drop down back into the previous cell that we were already in. Yeah, there it is. There is a... Uh, there is some kind of a way to drop down onto a ledge. Which I don't quite remember how to do. There's a couple more things around here. If I can't figure it out, uh, I just won't um, fuck about too long. But for now, we can just grab all the stuff. One of the things that's interesting to me about Seath and his whole archival thing is that it feels like a bit of a grab bag. There's, you know, big gear clockwork technology. There's stuff going on. But there's also the giant wizard's library. His experiments seem to be to do with creating life, but also to creating immortality. Is there a connection between the creation of life and the uh, attainment of immortality? We'll eventually find out that Seath's... Um... Ah, okay, good to know. I'll find it that way then. Um, Seath's immortality that he's gained since he was, in my opinion, probably the first dragon to be born. Uh, since the, the immortal everlasting dragons existed sort of naturally in the primordial time before time existed. So I reckon that once disparity came along and uh, things started to understand the difference between existence and non-existence, there was definitely a, um, a moment there where they became living creatures. Ah, I think that's... Uh, no, I can't get out of it. Do I drop down from way above? Well, there's definitely something in there anyway, which I can drop down to from up here. But yeah, so my personal belief is that much like Nito, First of the Dead, is literally the first person ever to have died. Um, I think that Seath might be the first dragon ever to have been born after the coming of Disparity. Fucking hell. And... Um, that's why he doesn't have the scales of immortality, like the others do. And that's also why he's extremely weird and fucked up. Ah, yes. So in here we find the maiden outfit. Worn by travelling maidens, part of their formal attire. So there's a character who is a maiden of the Way of White that we'll find later, which I think she's wearing the same outfit, so... Possibly that's a kind of like a vestal outfit worn by worn by various people who um, are nuns or whatever in the the followers of the different gods van Orlando, and that again is a connection between the Picassos in the cell at the bottom of this and and this person who's died in these cells up here. Now, how the hell do I get that over there? Oh, I think I remember what it is now. This door I couldn't open. I think one of the keys we've picked up since lets us open it. Because I think there's three keys to the various jail cells. There it is. And that lets us drop down here. Hopefully not dying. We're fine. Which lets us grab this. And there's like two more drop downs to get back to the bottom. So the whole, um, the Wizard Palace Ducal Archives is a really lush aesthetic. I personally really like it. I like that they've gone gone ham on the old academia vibe. It's less so in this chamber because this is a prison, but, um, you know, even the prison walls are lined with books and books and books. And there's just something about, you know, polished hardwood desks, gold inlay, you know, marble floors. It's like... I love museums. I know they have terrible, awful colonialist histories, most of them, but I love I love big, grand buildings with marble and gold inlay and interesting things to look at and learn about. Incidentally, for anyone currently listening who doesn't know, um, I've realised I never actually say this, I just tweet it and hope people realise, but um, I do these streams on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, 7pm UK time for about two hours. Um, you know, so... Put that in your diary if you like what I do. 
Anyway, it's time to continue on to the harder part of the archives, which is the main actual archive proper and which I either get through on the first try or get relentlessly stuck in. Oh, I'm sorry, I mispronounced. It's actually Ook. Considering we have a government that consists primarily of chimps that have somehow discovered how to learn uh, how to wear suits. I had a whole thing. Basically, the UK government is absolute garbage, is what I'm getting at. <laughs> Ow. We don't have a single politician who didn't get to where he is by just relentlessly throwing his shit. I always forget I can't kick um, with this gear. With the rapier, you can't, instead of kicking, you do like a, a forward stab and hop backwards at the same time. Yowza. Okay, let's not die. Dying is bad for our goals because it means that we cannot progress forwards and cannot achieve our business excellence. Oh, it's interesting that you mention it, Girl Like Substance, actually, because I, if, I been, if I remember correctly, um, the rotating staircases in the Harry Potter movies were a direct inspiration for this zone, um, with its rotating staircases in the middle. Um, unfortunately, we no longer go there, and um, the rest of the vibe is those kind of grand academic libraries from For Realsies Academia. These guys are a huge pain in the ass. Um, they start to teleport away as soon as you start to do them do any damage to them. I think they have a fixed chain of locations, but they also do an absolute shit ton of damage, so you've got to be really careful. If you can hit them twice, you can blast them out of existence, but um, if you can't hit them twice, you'll be in trouble. This is going to kill me! In terms of which area I feel is the most fun to try and get through, um, I'm not really sure. I think that, oh wait, least fun to go through? Okay, uh, <laughs> it might be the Duke's Archive, but I have a personal um, distaste for uh, the Tomb of Giants as well. Um, I think it's just really, really irritating. We should probably put a ring on. Incidentally, the white seance ring was uh, also available to that. Uh, we got that off that corpse, so that implies that that was a member of the Way of White, rather than uh, a member of any other particular thing. Perhaps having run out of Maidens of um, Guinevere, or whatever it was we said earlier, uh, Seath has begun abducting mortal humans instead from the Way of White. Yeah, that escape teleport is um, exceptionally frustrating. But yeah, in terms of my least favourite areas to run through, um, let's see, I really like the first few areas of the game, um, and I really like the run through New Londo, and uh, flooded New Londo. It might be the Ducal Archive, actually, that is my least favourite. Got lucky with the uh, animation dodge there, which is what we love to see. You know, rapiers really are the best of both worlds. It's a sword, but you also get the stabbing benefit. Oh, am I still wearing- I'm still wearing some of the dark set. I should probably actually- uh, no, the assassin's set. I should probably actually find uh, a decent outfit to wear, considering we all love fashion souls. Now, if I do this, I should be able to get a- strong hit on in, on in this guy before he escapes, and I pressed the wrong button. He'll be out of here by the time that hits him. Yeah. Wasted a soul spear. And he's going to teleport in over there. I should be able to kill him, though. Yeah, do your stupid little dance. Oh my god, the dance made him dodge. So that was incredibly unlucky on my part. The animation of him dodging actually took him through uh, out of the space where my, my arrow was going. One of the amazing things about Dark Souls is that, hip, that the hitboxes are all incredibly carefully designed. 
Much like the animation where that uh, snake man wrapped his head around the lever he was uh, pulling, there's that attention to detail in almost every aspect of it. Every tiny piece of this game has that like desperate desire to be like logical and accurate. And that's why things break into a ton of pieces that will eat your GPU memory as they scatter around and bounce all over the room. Um, in fact, things breaking into a silly number of pieces is, is a trend through all the Souls games. I love the scroll cases in Dark Souls 3 that break into about, literally about 400 individual pieces. Um, completely unnecessarily. Yeah, that is true. I definitely have trouble shooting past pillars, but the, the hitboxes on characters are all really, really carefully aligned. So in this area, we can get up and down uh, these galleries. There's a couple of sides accessible on each on each side. A couple of, of heights, I guess, a couple of tiers. While well, you get shot at by archers and potentially stabbed by stabby guys. I believe that's the correct technical turn. I mean, I've said this before, but arrows are just stabs from far away. So I guess all of these guys are stabby guys. That one's named Stabatha, that one was Stabthaniel. Looks like I can't get anywhere from up here, so we need to rotate the boards. Look at these staircases. I love the fretwork between the balustrades, it's just lovely. You know, I can practically smell the oiled wood and the brass fittings everywhere. think that there is a chest. Nope, it's on a different one of these. So there's, yeah, there's a couple of different layers that you can get up to via these. I believe there's three tiers that are reachable. And at the very bottom there, that's actually where we came in. That was the first hall that we got through on the ground floor. Then we went up that lift and at the top of that lift, we got instantaneously bodied by a boss who was programmed to defeat us without even trying, which I think is unfair. With a bit of luck, I think there's another bonfire up here somewhere, and then there's a bonfire at the bottom as well before the second zone. Because I think all of the uh, all of the four major bosses that you can chase after at this stage of the game have um, two zones when you try to reach them. There is an outer zone and an inner zone for Seath. His outer zone is definitely the archives, but the inner zone is the is the Duke's forest and the weird crystal. Caves. I guess he has three zones, but the forest is very small. Uh, the game has a tutorial demon, and then it also has that demon come back as another boss later in the game a couple times. If that's what you mean. I don't think... Is there anything else up here? It's not an invisible wall, is it? Nope. Alright, I'm going to try and fight this guy. I say immediately before getting shot. I'm out of soul spears, that's a shame. If I fight him from down here, will he teleport away? No, he'll just shoot me in the head with blue lasers. In fact, <laughs> you can cheese these guys really easily because you can find spots where they can't hit you and you can hit them. Such as this one. But as I say, uh, the arrows in the game rarely do any damage. Even if you specialize in dexterity, you can't get a lot of damage on a bow. So I tend to rely on arrows as a tool for moving NPCs around rather than something to actually kill something, but I cannot be bothered to fight this guy. It's such a pain in the ass, and if I die, I'll have to go back to the checkpoint. Also, if you position yourself the right distance away from an opponent, the refresh time on you firing an arrow can be the same as the stagger time from a headshot. So if you line it up right, you can chain stun them forever. This is uh, a fun tactic that you might want to try using at some point. Chain stuns. Chain stuns for victory. Now this, I think... Is this a normal chest? This is a normal chest. It's fine. It's not a problem yet. Strong magic shield would be great if we were using sorcery in our offhand, but... Hang on a second. No, uh, I think we can cast that in our main hand, but we don't really need the... Uh, we don't really need to cast it, so it's fine. We'll rely on not being hit. It's the magic weapons. Uh, those spells are the ones you have to have in your offhand to cast, so that you can buff the spell you have in your main hand. Now over here, I think this is the shortcut. 
card or the the thing, the what's it, the doodad. Ooh, okay, don't shoot me. Yeah, that lets us get down to ground level, but there's a couple more things to grab up here on the galleries. I definitely know there's a mimic around here somewhere. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna shoot this guy before he causes more problems. I'm not sure what he's aiming at. Oh fucking hell. And this, people, is why we need guardrails. You may or may not have noticed guardrails here, there's guardrails everywhere. There's guardrails up and down the edges of the galleries. Very safe place. It's one of the safest places in Dark Souls. You know, you can't throw yourself off these things if you want to. There's clearly been um, a proper Losha agent through here, you know, the Lordran Office of Health and Safety. But tragically, 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 that side room's got jack shit. Yeah, that's kind of, I think that's Miyazaki's whole deal, really. That's his trick that he's found. It's put you in a position where you're like, I can just about make it. I can just about get through. I can just about make it. And then, uh, no. You get used to the guardrails and then you rely on the guardrails. You come to trust the guardrails. You know that the guardrails will have your back and indeed your front and your sides. But you're a fool and my God, you're irritating. Eat some explosions. I've got one more explosion for this guy. If you move fast enough, you can get to him before he starts casting his next spell. Um, or he might start casting that again. That's all my big cannons out. I'm probably going to die now. Right, let's have a quick drink. One arrow is, <laughs> is better than just remaining damaged. I love the extremely silly dance. I, I think it's very wiggly and entertaining. Um, I would appreciate it if the dance did not buff everything around him. Thank God for these pillars. These are here for he's here on purpose, actually. If you put together a few different item descriptions, um Oh what the fuck? Well that's what, forty five thousand souls and five humanity straight down the drain? God almighty. I'm not, I'm not sure what happened there. I didn't think he did that much damage. Uh, either they do that, <laughs> do that much damage, and I was just wrong, and uh, hubris for yeah, that's what I thought. It, it did look like it was a double hit. God damn. Okay. So this is why I hate the archive. It's that guy specifically. Like everybody else in this zone, I know how to deal with, and that one guy. Woof. That's like. Three level ups and a whole bunch of humanity gone. It does let you do the dance, which is only really useful if you have allies that you've summoned in, because I believe you can buff them with it, and it is a very strong buff. Pathetic. Well, anyway, that's just... It's okay, it's okay. Let's just move on. Let's let's forget all about the 40,000 souls. Let's just keep going. It will be fine. It's all good. Eat explosions. Die in a fire of some kind. Ideally, one projected out of my face by magic powers. See? He ain't so tough. I guess that's true. Unfortunately, I do not have joy in my heart, and that's the main problem here. If I just trusted the heart of the cards, you know, we'd have already gone through this zone and it would be fine. Also, I believe these are the only respawning channelers, which makes sense because the channelers are um, Seath's apprentices, I guess you'd call them, his, his minions, his followers. 
That's 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 a death drop. So um yeah, so it makes sense that they they respawn here because this is where there would be a lot of them. But um I think there's a bowman on that side, but I can just ignore him. Boo. Anyway, what the hell was I saying? Um, I, had, I had this whole gag ready. I was going to talk about how if you put together the uh, the secrets from a few different item descriptions and something a character says, you can figure out that the students of the Ducal Archive used to have magic jewels in these corridors, and that's why they installed these pillars, so that they had something to hide behind, so that the mortality rate for new students would go down a bit. But no, I just died instantaneously. Dodge through it that time. Let's see if we can get into a nice safe spot here and do this again. I'm going to use my large number of magic wands to cast Expel Magic Wand at high velocity using stored elastic energy. It's not very effective, but it is getting a chain stun. The main benefit of this is that it stops him doing his fucking uh, escape teleport, which means that I can just keep him trapped. If I ran up and stabbed him with my sword, um, he would not get the chains done, and therefore he would not be stuck here. Love these floppy guys. <laughs> Where are you going? Well, bye. The Dark Souls ragdolls are just a delight, a constant delight to me. Whenever you're going through the darkest of places, whenever you're really struggling, or whenever you're thinking about how you should just give up and you can't push on, the game's too hard, you don't have the skills, but think about those wiggly corpses. Think about how fun it'll be to, to kick them around and watch the wiggly corpses wiggle. Now, I think this is the way I should have gone, because is there a thing here? I think there's a thing... No, actually, this is the way I came in. I am a fool. I do get lost really easily in most Dark Souls zones. Um, hmm. Let's give this a spin. You having trouble too, buddy? Yeah. Okay, we've definitely been here. Okay, so I am missing somewhere a uh, a useful thing. Is it through? No, it's not through here. How the hell do you get to the... Maybe I fought it last time. Maybe it wasn't just in the area I've already been in. You know, I really should not have made fun of this guy for failing to hit me like four times. All right, now let's take the safe way down. So you see, like, you get used to the guardrails in this area. All of the ledges and stuff have, have balustrades and guardrails and stuff. This one has this little waist high, or not even waist high, knee high wall. It looks like you can't walk into it, but you, if you if you push into it with all of the momentum instead of just part, you, you do in fact, fact hop over the edge. So that's a thing that happens. Anyway, here we have an important shortcut. Everyone loves a moving uh, bookcase door. It is one of the fundamental desires of the human heart, is to have a door that's part of a bookcase. It's actually a really nice pub where I live, which um, is themed around Dracula, of all things, which has uh, the bathroom doors are hidden behind a bookcase. It's um, fun, but also kind of a trap for drunk people. Because, you know, when you're eight pints deep, you don't really want to be f trying to figure out which bookcase is the one that has the secret door behind it that leads to the bathroom. In fact, I think the, I think the staff literally prop it open um, at peak times for exactly that reason. What's in here? Love a bit of blue titanite. So 
So around here somewhere should, I think, be the key that will allow us to release poor old uh, giant wizard boy, which is going to be his name now. Is it in here? Nope, that's the crystal ember. That lets us make crystal weapons at the magic blacksmith. That lever lets us get into the next zone. Uh, I'm just going to... I'm just going to wake this up, because it's it's not a fun guy. Um, it's also not a mushroom, which would have been the appropriate pun for me to make if it was, but... Nope, it's one of these guys. Fortunately, I have Soul Spear. You know, I don't know why people complain about fighting these things. They're so easy. All you really need is the capacity to project your soul at great force out of your face. And have a big enough soul that it really fucking hurts when you do that. Okay, so I, I think we still don't have the key to go rescue him. Which is more of a problem for him than for us, but I would, you know, like to get the good sorceries. If we do rescue him, we will eventually get access to Crystal Soul Spear, which is one of the highest damage spells in the game. Crystal Soul Spear will just kill most things in one hit, um, and will knock, like... You know, an eighth of a boss's health off in one hit, so an extremely useful spell to have. Now this guy is normally on top of the bookcase, I think. I think he fell down. There's also a magic crossbow called uh, Avalyn or Evelyn, which for some reason I'm always convinced is on is in here somehow but isn't. That might be because it's in an archive in Dark Souls 3 and I am a fool. Oh, is it by the Crystal Caves? Well, we'll come back when I find it. So, yeah, we'll do that. But, like, I'm pretty sure that crossbow is in this game, but I cannot for the life of me remember how to find it. In fact, I think it was one of the only items I missed on my recent replay. Oh, it is in here. I always thought it was on top of one of the bookcases, but I apparently was incorrect in that uh, belief. I think you have to jump off one of the spinning staircases as it moves. Am I right in that? Aha, I was correct. It was just the wrong room. Can I, excuse me, can you back up? Sir? Sir, you're not helping. Thank you. So we're now back around to where we were, except I think we're on the lowest, on the lowest uh, of these tiers now, which means that um, I think we can access a bit of this back room that we couldn't access previously, which should have the mimic that I've been honking about this entire time. Aha! Okay, so this is where you get the mimic, and this is also just where we came in previously. So before we lost to the boss in the forced fail, I never use crossbows. I've never seen the point of crossbows in this game, honestly. Um, they just seem like more clumsy bows. Like they do more damage than a bow, but they don't meaningfully feel like they do more damage. I don't see the point in devoting the weight to carrying a crossbow because um, you can't use it the way you can use a uh, a bow in, in order to aim and carefully reposition enemies. Therefore... Yeah, there it is, in that chest over there, you're right. Well, let's see if we can grab it then, since I have this obsession with getting every single item in every single Dark Souls. See, as I said, it's more about repositioning enemies. And as I will continue to say, every time I do it, and every time one of these guys hammer and tongs me to death. I think all of their animations are a bit faster than the ordinary shitty Scolo Hel Skeletons? Sure, let's go with that. Um, all of the shitty hollow skeletons that you fight throughout the game, I think, but I'm not certain. Definitely that shoulder charge is something only they have, though. This is where the... Uh, Mimic was? I was remembering correctly. So I think we can actually call this uh, 
lift back down and go back up and have a look at the boss battle room with Seath, but right now there shouldn't be anything in it. Later on there will be some interesting things. Oh look. Oh, I wish I had a sniper rifle right now. I've got perfect sight on the back of his head. I guess that makes sense, but like in that instance I usually have a pyromancy for that purpose. Does anyone remember if I unlocked the bonfire? Because I sure don't. Let's not die again in a stupid fashion. Mind you, most Dark Souls deaths are stupid. Oh shit, he's there. Oh, for heaven's sake! One day I will remember. One day I will remember not to let my hubris destroy me. I literally straight up forgot that the channelers respawn, even though seconds prior I had been looking at a respawned channeler. That's, that's how much trouble I apparently have. Yep, the disaster of the huge bris strikes again. So we'll have one more try to get a hold of the uh, big crossbow, and if I don't manage it, I'm going to give up, because it makes for bad radio, especially if I start to get all tilty and complain about how this game is terrible and impossible to beat and nobody should ever play it because it's so difficult, which is completely the opposite of my usual refrain. I do wonder what I'd be like streaming something like Sekiro, because I really had no not that much trouble with Sekiro on my second attempt to beat that game, and um, which was my first successful attempt. But boy, oh boy, does talking make it more difficult to play this sort of thing. So he's up there. I need to get to the second story, right? Which is not accessible from this side. Yeah, I need to go. I need to go up and then back around. I want to get my precious, precious thingamajig. Mind you, with that channeler having his back to me, I think I can just get the fuck through here and not have a problem. Unless I get killed again. Let's not bother him. He's, he's, a, he's an academic researcher, he's busy. Uh, there's nothing wrong with me just continuing through here and ignoring that gentleman and not uh, trying to fight him pointlessly. If the channelers are researchers, I'm going to assume these are research assistants. Actually, no, based on their general demeanor, inability to do anything but snarl and stab, um, and apparent liking for crystals, I'm going to assume that these are students. Get dunked on, students. Yeah, so the real difficulty here is timing this right. Because um, you have to you have to dive back down here and not get shot. And then drop off. And not miss! Okay, well, you know, that's how you get the Avalon if you want to try and grab it. It's a good crossbow. It fires three times because it's three crossbows duct taped together because that is the mother of invention. Just duct taping shit together until you get something new. So let's go on with the actual route of the game, which is to come back over here, do this. And head on into the Royal Forest or the Ducal Forest or the Forest of something. What's in this? I can never remember what's in all the different chests. Prism stones, those will come in handy. And wait, really? I fell for it, god damn. There's also kind of, there's all of these gears and, and rusty iron contraptions, So there's and there's no real explanation as to what's up with that. 
the ruined apparatus in the prison hall is implied to be something for something. But, um... Wait, what? Huh? What hidden rooms? Did I miss hidden rooms? Have I missed illusory chambers? Because another interesting thing is that somewhere around here is a golem that should have a friendly face hidden inside it. Which is not what you really usually do with golems. I think last time I played through this I needed to look up where his key was. Because I'm terrible. But I'm also developing a healthy fear of those channelers. Tell you what, why don't you be an extremely useful part of the team and look it up for me? They generally don't advise trying to beat one of these things before. Wait. I thought it was in there, but then I checked every every chest and I couldn't find it. Unless I just have it. Did I pick it up and not realise? Archive giant, door key, that's the way out, extra key, archive tower, cell key, cage key. No, I don't have it. I think I'm going to keep this hat on no matter what else I do. Also, I've never noticed this before, but that is the velt crown of the... Or, it's not a crown, this guy. Uh, the pardoner's hat. Oh, did I miss this one? Is it in here? Ah, there it is. Okay. That's that's the one that will let us rescue him. Which means, of course, that we have to work our way back. Since we can't uh, travel from this bonfire. Well, we can travel from it, but we can't travel to the other bonfire, I mean. Oh, I hate it when you're not quite aligned correctly to get your parry. That's a shame. So I guess I just was not observant enough to notice that. Also, these guys have a pretty high drop rate for crystal swords, even if you aren't carrying five liquid humanity that you then lose like an idiot. Um, so when you get through this area, you tend to end up with like four or five spare crystal swords that you don't need. The crystal upgrade makes it that it is not repairable. It does more damage, and I think it does intelligence damage scaling as well, maybe. But um, it is not repairable. Once it breaks, it's gone forever. And that's just not very useful. And also, unlike most items in the game, you cannot sell it to Frampt for a good amount of money. If you try to feed it to Frampt, he will give you one crystal because he does not approve of Seath. Not crystal, he will give you one soul for it. Stuff relating to darkness and... Um, evil things, I guess, Frampt usually gives you almost nothing for. Uh, although, interestingly, he does give you extra thing, extra money, extra souls if you try to uh, feed him something associated with women, which is strange. He's just a horny old snake. This is not the right way. I can probably get away with just sprinting past the channeler up here. Blast him in the back of the head with a soul spear. As a nice little surprise. Like a bully running past someone in a high school hallway. I might kill this guy just so that he doesn't shoot me in the back of the head. The irony! Oh my god, a bloodstain. <gasps> 20,000 souls, nice. Okay. You make Framp sound like a complete incel, which I kind of believe. I kind of buy that for him. Dark Souls, you die a lot. If Frampt is an incel, does that mean that Karth fucks? 
Maybe he casts into BDSM. He's right at the other end of the spectrum. Well, I mean, you can definitely fuck if all you have is a head. Like, not to put too fine a point of it. Two heads, two mouths. Seems like he'd do okay. But really, we all know that he's into non-consensual war scenarios. Oh, come on, you know what I'm like. You come to my channel on this? The evening of my first stream in a little while? And you say to me these things. Disrespectful. Please don't laser me. He lasered me. Time to waste some healing juice, because we don't have much of a choice. Is he still going to be shooting arrows? Why is the range on those things? They definitely have a lot more range on their sorceries than I do. Because I can't shoot more than like a third of this distance without him, uh, without it just disappearing into the air. So I never realized that before, that these guys have a much, much bigger range on their spells than you do. Which feels unfair, if you ask me. I completely buy that, but the question is, is Karth the Dom or does he like, uh, does he enjoy getting tied up? He's a snake. Maybe he gets tied into knots. Maybe that's his whole deal. Oops, missed the timing on that one. Is he going to hit the floor? Yeah. I'm just going to stab him and make him relocate at this point. Also, these guys, as far as I can tell, have no backstab position. Which is irritating as hell when you're trying to fight them. Yeah, the Dark Wraiths are just like, you're, you're literally our boss. Like, we're not comfortable with that. What the hell am I even doing? I've literally forgotten why I'm here. Oh shit, it's that guy. Uh, I'm going to ignore my souls and try and find my way back to... Um, that doorway over there that is behind him. Ow. I probably should have equipped the, um, crest shield, which would have given me magic resistance. Oh really? You've started doing the gym again? Good for you. I really miss being able to work out. I still have not recovered sufficiently. Also, if you're responding to something someone else is saying, I cannot see what they have said, so I don't know if that's, like... Are they banned on my channel? Is that a thing? Or is that just half a conversation I'm seeing? I'm just... I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna run. Ah, okay, I see. Oh, I missed a message. That makes sense. Enjoy your nap, enjoy your sleep, enjoy your dinner, enjoy... Uh, everything. For some reason, I always thought that these um, these staircases don't reset, but apparently they do. I'm just going to lead a train of these guys through the archives like a fucking conga line. For any, yeah, it's a, yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. I have to get back up to the top tier of these, I think. Or the middle tier, which requires me to get over on this side. Um, and then drop down, I think. But I don't know if anyone's... Wait, I went past it? Oh no. Oh, the guy was in front of it. I'm stupid. It's down there, isn't it? Yeah.
Well, no, I didn't go past it. It's that I had to climb up here to get onto this railing to get back around, didn't I? Yeah, see? So I didn't miss it. It's over here. Bye, so long. Don't be a problem. Right then. Um, I don't know if anyone's ever played things like EverQuest and other really old MMOs, but there was this uh, concept that you used to have way back in the day of train to zone, which is that um, where people were just trying to get through an area and there wasn't fast travel back then, what people would do is they would yell train to zone uh, and they would just sprint through the entire zone uh, and every every enemy they aggroed would chase after them which sounds like a bad idea but you could generally outrun the enemies but that means that there would be like 15, 30, 40 monsters chasing you as you cross this zone which would aggro to other people so if people heard someone yell train to zone they knew they needed to get the fuck out of the way Well, snakes for the memories, I guess. Oh shit, that guy survived. Straight up thought I killed him. How many? He's got like two hit points left. I do find the archives really difficult to navigate because of the um, staircases. They really are like hard to keep track of, but. The access to this this area is uh, on the middle level, on the left-hand side when you're looking from the ground floor bonfire. But to reach that, you have to go up and then down again, uh, unless you've already rotated the staircases. It can be a pain in the ass. So that's another reason why I don't like the Duke's Archive very much. And that's one reason we're tackling it first. I really enjoy New Londo. We'll have fun there. Um, contrary to a lot of opinions, I actually really like Isolith and the Demon Ruins. I think those are a fun area, even if they are somewhat badly designed and extremely strange. Um, oh yeah, you may have noticed all the Picasses respawn. But I don't think they're aggressive unless the music is on. Or I guess they're a lot less aggressive if the music isn't on. I assume this thing is coming to fight me. No, I'm not interested in a hug, thank you. Oh, they have a big hitbox on those attacks. This is actually a really good soul farming location, one of the five or six in the game. But uh, we're just going to blast our way through. This is one of the few times it's... well, not the few times. Generally, pyromancy is great, and one of the reasons why it's great is that in situations like this, you can just kill all of these with a couple of huge fireballs. You don't have to dick about shooting them all in individually. Bed of Chaos is really easy if you just remember where you need to go and what you need to do. So not to be all get good, but like, have you tried getting good? Notably, the two who drop stuff don't respawn, so perhaps they had not become you know, combined enough in this strange uh, mutation in order to actually become... Did I miss... Isn't there a chest up there? Did I miss something? I can't remember. Well, whatever. Ooh, a firekeeper soul. Very useful. Although, implicitly, surely this is the firekeeper for the, fire, for the bonfire that's up there, so I don't know exactly what's going on with that. So this is kind of the last gasp for him as a guy with a brain that makes sense. So next time we reload the area, he will uh, move to the ground floor of the archive and uh, he will be uh, become crazy slowly. And then once we bought all of his magics, he's going to relocate up to the boss room where we fought Seath previously. And uh, he'll start throwing crystal magics at you, and if you kill him, you can get some of the crystal spells. 
it's uh, implicit that crystal magic will turn you crazy. Why? We don't know. It's just one of those things. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, I don't criticize anyone for not being good at any one aspect of this game. Like, there's a bunch of different stuff that you can be good at or bad at in a, in a game, and especially this game. I tell you, I will not be sorry to, sorry when we're done in here, though. Also, I do find myself wondering, like, does C3 read these? Is that what the channelers are for? Is the channeler's job to read books to him? Because he is very, very large, and these books are very, very small. It does seem like your um, your obsession is what stops you from going hollow. Your obsession is what keeps you human and and lets you stop you know maintain your existence and stop and not die and stuff but uh, it also seems like your obsession is also the cause of your downfall there's this interesting pairing in dark souls thematically where you have these things that are ultimately what stop you from losing despair or from gaining despair and from losing your mind and stuff but then ultimately if you become too obsessed will take you too far and that's not good i don't actually need to kill him ah i missed he's really hard to target weirdly Yowza. Can we just not? Why are we fighting? We're both sorcerers. Why don't we be friends instead? I love that dance so much, but I hate the guys. You know? It's like love the sin, I hate the sin. Except for wizards that I can't stand. I don't have to deal with you anymore because I made you reposition. That's the real trick of Dark Souls, is learning how to make things reposition. So, now that we've got the uh, side door opened, we can just run down the staircases and we don't need to fuck about. Which is the other secret of Dark Souls, learning what you can and cannot uh, refer to as fucking about and dispose of. So I t I'm actually tempted to upgrade the Lightning Dagger. Um, we'll probably be using Velka's Rapier for the rest of the game at this point because its its magic stuff is good. So if we upgrade Velka's Rapier, Rapier using Twinkling Titanite, then we can get it to plus four, not quite plus five. We need a bit more. Or why can't I upgrade that? Yeah, it needs four and I have three. That's what that is. But the reason why I want to upgrade our lightning weapon is that we are about to go fight a dragon, and generally speaking, dragons don't like lightning. So we don't have enough chunks to level it up anymore, but it'll still come in handy. I might drop some uh, blessed science on this bonfire and upgrade it a little bit as well, but let's go see if we can talk to the mushroom man. So this is where we get the good shit. Also, it's really funny to me that he blends in so fucking well with the astrolabes. Look at that. Last time I played this, I couldn't fi find him because I came in here, saw saw his hat, and just assumed he was one of these astrolabes and was just like, oh, he's not here. Did he just repeat that line? Perhaps. Well, actually, I was wondering what the crystal, what the primordial crystal is, and what its deal is. It's not explained everywhere. They never go into it anywhere. 
So that's 30 and 50,000 that I want to get. How much do I have in my pocket? Uh, I might have enough to get one of those, actually. I might want to use Priscilla's soul. I still want to use the Moonlight Butterfly soul, so... I think that's like 5,000 and these like 2,000, so we're not going to have enough. But that's fine. We can come back after we kill Seath. Oh, do you think so? Let's have a look. Helm of the Channelers. Sorcerers that serve Seath are scaleless, which is a hard sentence to say if you keep saying sibilants. The six eyes arranged in two vertical com columns compensate for Seath's lack of sight. See, what people usually read into that is, uh, oh, that means that they're his spies. They go through the world and then he can see through their eyes so that he can see what's going on in other parts of the world. But no, I think you're right. Um... I suspect he relies on reports, just like everybody else, but they compensate for his lack of sight by reading to him. We've proved it. We've cracked it open. The last mystery of Dark Souls has revealed itself to us. Hashtag problem solved. So good shout there. But um, the thing about the Primordial Crystal, though, is that it's never explained. There's not really any information about it anywhere. It's just something to do with the, the Primordial Dragons and a sacred treasure that was stolen. So my personal belief... Well, I mean, there's any number of things it could be. One speculation that I have come up with is that it's perhaps a shard of stasis from before... Um, you know, from the time of stasis, before the coming of disparity and the possibility of things being separate from other things. As such, it would probably be quite sacred to the immortal dragons, since, you know, the universe was theirs when there wasn't really an understanding of mine or yours. Um, so if there was some kind of preserved shard of that existence, it would be quite sacred to them. And it's fairly reasonable to think that you might be able to manipulate that magically in order to give yourself immortality, considering that it is this kind of... Um, component of 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 stasis of of not having to worry about life and death you can see we're doing a lot more damage already now that we've leveled this up i think it's mentioned in a couple places that he's blind He's kind of, I think, referred to as being deformed in some ways, which is not exactly uh, the ideally the ideal non-ableist woke language. But um, he is, I mean, he does have tentacles for legs instead of leggy legs like most dragons have. But I don't know what Eula is. Um, oh, hi. Uh, excuse me. Sorry. Is this is this your corner? I didn't realize. I feel like I'm just gently tapping these guys with a stick. Tick, 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 tick. Love blue titanite. I believe these guys drop it pretty easily as well. I think, I think they're guarding something. Let's see what we can get. Ah, I see. Well, I'm sure there's very many uh, famous blind scientists. Something about scientists makes me think that, like, that must be a common scenario. But yeah, that's not an unreasonable reference to make in that context. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Reblog if you think that the girl on the right is just as immortal as the girl on the left. And then Seath is just seething off in the corner. A pun I can't believe I've never made before. Well, I think someone else might have made one on the last stream, so... Oh yeah, those giant crystals on their shoulders aren't part of their hitbox, so if you miss and the arrow just goes straight through the crystal, they will uh, not react as if they've been hit. They just react to the noise of it hitting the wall. Uh, 
He hasn't been peeled. He didn't have a peel to begin with. That's what he's upset about. Which is a resentment I can really understand as, like... You know, someone who spent a decade indoors with severe agoraphobia and other mental health issues. Um, I've kind of watched other people have lives and been like, how come you get to go do this stuff and have fun and be people? So I completely understand the resentment of a dragon, you know, one of the dragons of immortal scales being born without his immortal scales and therefore having to deal with immortality. Like, frankly, I in his position, I would have betrayed the dragons too. Like, fuck you guys, this isn't fair. I want to be immortal too. Well, no, you can't, I'm afraid. Can I have the crystal? No. Okay, well, I'm going to go work with the guys who will kill you. The weird thing about that decade of agoraphobia is, like, I started making Let's Plays halfway through it, and then I just went on hiatus for, like, five years, and I really wish I kept going then, because I might have a decent, like sized audience by now if I had, but uh, it's back to um, trying to build it up from level one, I guess. Now, I don't see... I know what it is. Normally, uh, we would find a golem in the middle here, and when destroying it, it would release um, Siegmeier's daughter, I believe, uh, which would then be the next step of his quest, but that's the step that appears after we go save him in Blight town or the swamp below blight town which we will do after we are done here i guess and then we can come back and around i do miss how much funnier i was back in the old the old days um i feel like i'm not mega on nowadays are these guys magic resistant let's find out Oh, I'd never even realised there was a Gravelord, a Gravelord Servant. And yeah, they are pretty magic resistant, considering that was like 160 instead of 500 damage that he just took. In the unlikely event that someone is watching who is not aware, I have a YouTube channel where I do like carefully researched and in-depth Let's Plays, which are a lot more uh, highly produced, let's say, than these uh, a bit more casual streams. So go check that out. I'll tell you what that was depressing though. When I when I booted up my stream manager today and I just saw that the like several of the like most recent uh follows I have here on Twitch have all like been cancelled out. Like it's just empty name slots because they were bots. <laughs> oh well. I don't- why am I even fighting these things? They don't have anything. I don't need to fight any of these guys. So that's the Crystal Warrior that we fought immediately before fighting Seath the first time, which itself reminds me of something I've been meaning to point out, which is that Seath clearly has um, some kind of deep understanding of the metaphysics of this world and how to manipulate it to his benefits, because he's the only person smart enough to um, attempt to trap you with a bonfire in a cell, you know? The undead wake back up at bonfires. You wake back up and uh, there's a bonfire right there. So of course you rest at the bonfire and hey, guess what? That's where you respawn now. Sucks to be you. Which is incidentally exactly the same problem with the bonfire they added for Vemos late in the game. Um, unintentionally, but uh, the, on the only bonfire they add to the game is in that zone. And it is, well, if you rest there, you're trapped. Sucks to be you, I guess. Welcome to the antagonistic relationship between the game developer and the uh, game player. I should do... I, I, I'd actually really like to do a stream playing through some of the older Elder Scrolls games, especially Morrowind, because... Um, much like Dark Souls, those games had a, an interesting... Well, I guess Morrowind specifically had this interesting interplay between... It's, it's sort of knowledge of itself as a game and as a narrative and to the inhabitants of that world how that interacts with who they are and how they feel and who you are as, an, as a special kind of a person in this world and, and what those people are historically like and, and how it interacts. It's, he super looks like he's guarding something. I bet he's not. I bet it's just a trick.
The thing about Daggerfall is I've never actually played Daggerfall, just read a whole bunch about it. Um, I find the the ending of Daggerfall fascinating, but only in context of later games. Um, I don't know how interesting and weird Daggerfall itself is. Um, whereas Morrowind I have played a whole bunch and I know exactly how weird it is. And I, I have a deep and lasting love for Morrowind. Unfortunately, Daggerfall was a little bit before my time, so I never built up the same knowledge base and the same love for it. Um, but uh, in case anyone is wondering... Yeah, see, he wasn't guarding anything. What's the point of all these guys? But um, yeah, the ending of Daggerfall is essentially there's eight different ways the plot can go and you can have eight different endings, which are all very different and all do not uh, tally with one another. However, um, fun fact, by the way, uh, if you if you aim, you can only there's a there's a, a maximum degree of like depression that you can lower your bow. However, if you then go out of the aiming aiming mode, you can actually manually aim down slightly, which is neat. I'm just trying to get that guy. There we go. Is that enough to aggro him? Yeah. With a bit of luck, he'll jump off the edge, but he probably won't. Oh, that's good to hear. Um, I Because I really, really enjoy Morrowind for a few different reasons. Um, one of which is incidentally to do with how it opens. Uh, in fact, when I started, when I decided to add streaming to the stuff I do on top of my, my YouTube Let's Plays, um, my initial shortlist of games I, I was going to stream actually definitely has Morrowind on it. The main reason I was reluctant to is because it can be a really long game. But um, in terms of like open world RPGs, especially the Elder Scrolls style ones that I can just get lost in, Morrowind is, is really up there. It's, it's one of these places I can just go and have an adventure um, and just get lost in it and play it for a hundred hours and, and, and inhabit uh, an, the inner life of a fantasy character in a fantasy world, which is kind of my jam. Morrowind, I think, is the most interesting because it's the one that has really interesting uh, setting design. Um, there's a lot of inspiration from kind of like old kind of like uh, what's the word? Is it like um, Vedic texts? The like the really old um, mystic mystic mystical religious texts from from India, I think, and a lot of these other influences that you don't often see a ton of, although it's become more popular nowadays. Um, I don't think I need to fight this thing, but I'm, I guess I'm gonna. I'm probably not gonna use magic on Seath, so let's... 68, are you kidding me? Anyway, what the fuck was I talking about? Um, anyway, so it's got this really interesting um, kind of like mysticism to it and these ideas and this kind of like deep stuff and like Dark Souls, uh, well, unlike Dark Souls, a lot of characters will tell you a lot of things, but the thing that... Um, Morrowind really does that I deeply love and that I respect that series for greatly is that everything you hear is just what one person says. Like, um, if you gain this piece of information, you have to factor in that a person told it to you and that person may have an agenda or a reason or they may be mistaken or they may be lying or any of these other reasons not to trust what, what you've heard. Um, I think my favourite example of that is that there's a couple of like history books you can find. There's a ton of in-game books that you can read. And a couple of them are, are, are history uh, commentaries and stuff. And um, there's, there's implied to be an ongoing battle, essentially, in, in the pages of learned journals between uh, these two uh, historians who have their, their competing theories of certain historical events. And there is this implication that that's just true everywhere, much like in real life. It all, it all boils down to what people think at times and what they think about stuff. But on top of that, it also has these sort of like meandering contemplations on divinity and and the nature of well, the nature of divinity and um, how it exists in the world and what it's for and all of this stuff, which were really interesting. Um, I won't I won't wax lyrical about it right now. Instead, I would rather talk about the main reason I fall in love with that game, which is that its opening does a special trick that none of the other, or at least none of the later um, 
Elder Scrolls games do, which is that it has this... Um, do you reckon I can get that and be safe? I'm not sure. I think that's just a big soul, so I'm not going to actually bother grabbing that item. Um, so the trick it pulls is that it um, it provides you with a little bit of, of background as to who you are and why you're there, but it really basically nothing. All you know is that you are a prisoner who has been released from prison and transported to this far-off province of an empire. You don't really know why you're there, you don't know why you're important, you don't know why you've been released from prison. And then... Um, you go into, you know, you go into the the immigration office, and all of the all of the immigration and customs stuff is your character design. So they ask you questions about your background and so on. And the immigration and customs is how you design your character, and that's cute and fun. Um, but the real trick is that they then say to you, like, okay, part of the conditions for your release are that you will carry this package to this place and deliver it to this person. So you can go do that, or you can not. You can just wander off. You can just go do something else. And that's great by itself, but it really ties into the next trick, which ties together and is how you get away from the main problem with uh, later games, which I'll expound on in a moment. When you go deliver it to him, what he says is like, great, welcome to the main plot. I am a spy master. You're now a spy who works for me. Your first job is to go establish yourself as a person in this society. Get a cover identity, join a guild, become an adventurer, maybe if you want to do that, or join the wizard's guild and do wizard shit, or become a merchant. I don't care, just go find a job and do it so that you have a, a cover identity. This is going to kill me if I'm not careful. And um, at that point, that's when you're really free and you can just wander off and do anything else in the world because the game has explicitly given you permission to do so. It has outright told you, go make your own fun in this world. And that's ultimately what most people who really get into these games do. What you're doing when you're playing an Elder Scrolls game is, you know, you're experiencing the guild storylines. You're wandering around as a kind of a ambling problem solver and visiting small villages and seeing what their deal is. That's what's fun about those games. And the structure of the later games has completely forgotten that and has decided that what people really want is a cinematic plot with high stakes and dramatic tension and above all um urgency and that's a huge mistake because that means that whenever you're playing through whenever you're playing through oblivion you have this constant thought in the back of your head like oh no oh no bad stuff is happening i'm supposed to be stopping the bad stuff why am i why am i trying to solve the random curse of this random village in the middle of nowhere and if you're not thinking that, then when you do go to the, do the main plot and they're like, it's terrible, it's a disaster, we need to solve this problem immediately. You're like, oh, okay, I guess I should have been doing that instead of this this whole time. And then it's far worse with Skyrim, which has this cinematic plot from minute one that draws you through and has this very urgent problem that cons people are constantly going, why aren't you solving this problem at you about? And that's so counter to what makes those games good. And it's worst of all in Fallout 4, where instead of letting you decide who you are and what your deal is and what you care about, they dictate for you who you are and what your deal is and why you care about anything. And then give you this urgent main plot, because you gotta, you gotta find your baby, gotta find your baby. What could be more urgent of a plot than that? It's, it's a huge mistake and a huge misstep and a huge misunderstanding of what most people get out of those games. Um, and Morrowind was the last time they ever really, really went ham on understanding why those games are good and what people get out of them and creating a very interesting world that was very weird and different to most fantasy settings of the time. And still is weird and different. It had very little of the um, kind of like generic medieval fantasy world stuff going on. It instead had this sort of bizarre place of, mush of like mushroom wizards and people who live in the carved out shells of giant beetles and a, a god who lives on a rock above a city with the fascinatingly manipulative tactic of see, see how well this, um, see how my people love me, their love holds this rock in the air above their city. With of course the implication that if they ever stop loving him through no fault of his own, it will drop on them. Like it's so bizarre and so interesting uh, and I deeply, deeply love it. It's one of my favourite games of all time. So, 
So um, that will have been my <laughs> that'll have been my rant of the evening, I guess. Uh, I hope people thought it was interesting and relevant. Time to go fight a dragon. I'll probably be silent throughout this fight, so uh, I'll just say now. Uh, if any of the new viewers who've shown up don't know, I do deep, in-depth Let's Plays on YouTube, and I uh, stream more casually three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 7pm UK time. Ah uh, yeah, see, he doesn't have eyes, he has horns where his eyes should be. I think this is part of the whole thing about Seath having been some kind of, um, not a mistake exactly, but like, I mean, I wouldn't frame it this way because I think that people should not talk about- wait, hang on, what? Oh, that's the wrong way. So after the first attempt to fight him, uh, you spawn in the other side of the arena, I believe, and have to run past him to go smash this. This time what we needed to do is turn around and smash it. That's the thing that's making him immortal. When you smash it, he's stunned for a moment, which can be used for shenaniganery, but I'm not going to bother because I don't have the energy to make it work. Instead, we're just going to be careful and wail on him. There's actually a better shield for me to use for this fight. The magic resistance shield would have been a better pick. I also probably should have picked up the curse bite ring. This may take me a few tries. Seath actually has a tail cut, like most of the dragons in the game, but you have to hit the very, like, last tiny little tip section of his rear tail, which is quite difficult to reach. Not least because he turns so fast. I might try Velka's rapier next, but he does have, uh some magic resistance, so we won't do very much damage with that, but I'll be interested to see if it does more than this than this dagger. It should be doing lots of damage because it's lightning enchanted, but its base damage is quite low. The worst thing about fighting Seath is that I really need to scratch my nose. He has a really limited moveset. He has two different of those laser sweeps. He has one big AoE laser that we saw happen previously that flings you up in the air. Um, and he has a f flailing attack with his hands and he has a, a, a big flailing attack with his tentacles. We've seen all of those now and it's basically just about managing them as you go. As long as you keep running to his like right or left tentacle, then you are generally just fine. It's mostly about the endurance, really. And of course, with any big Dark Souls boss, you have the irritating fact that you basically can't see them half the time. I mean, you generally can't see them even when they do, don't do put crystals in your face. Do I have any soul spears left? No, I don't. Not worth the effort. I don't think... Actually, how much damage will I do to him if I start blasting? Less than I do with my hits. That's... Also not tons, but let's just wail away on him.
The two different... Oh, shit, that's the big one. I think if I get behind him, I'm alright. Maybe not. Okay. The real danger with that one is that you'll die of curse, which we've talked about why is awful previously. The two arc attacks, one is close in and one is further out, so you do have to be a bit careful about uh, which angle he's using. The main reason we don't want to run in to the center and uh, wail on him is that even though most of his attacks will whiff, he'll be more likely to be provoked into doing the, the big central AoE, which is way more of a problem for us. This is bad. We're kind of stuck. So that could have gone better, but... Time to just keep chasing this slug boy around, I guess. I do think his wings are very pretty, though. Oh shit, that's the big one. It might fill the... In okay, we can get a, a better view of it, since I got far enough away in time. Uh, it does pretty much fill the entire chamber. There's a couple of places you can stand and be safe. Oh shit, that's another one. Fuck. This time I did not escape. I hate having to rely on humanity in a fight. That's one of the reasons why it's a good idea to go um, kill Nito early, or at least kill Pinwheel early, who's the boss you fight before Nito, so that you can get the um, better like upgrade bonfires ability, so that you can summon even more. Is he stuck? I think he might be stuck. It's possible for him to get stuck on terrain in such a way that he just only does that slam move. Uh, it looks like we're all right. The main thing that I'm doing is I'm keeping an eye on his hands. If I watch his hands, I can see whether he's doing the uh, like big blast move, which would be disastrous for me. That's There it is, but I should be able to kill him just before he gets it off. That was pretty close, but that's... Uh, that's Seath, everybody. So yeah, um, not a difficult boss if you can keep track of where his hands are and which moves he's using. Generally easier to fight if you have a long weapon. Unfortunately, my only long weapon is uh, magic damage. Let's save these souls for um, dealing with uh, our good buddy back in the place. I think this should take us to the ground floor of the Duke's archives, the central bonfire. And here we are, so we can now go buy some extra good spells from our buddy. I guess that's true with the like vertical slices, but um, if you if you use the right move sets, it's not it's not mega difficult. It just depends on which weapons you pick. Love to get a crystal soul spear. Love to get home in crystal soul mass. We do need to also buy a crystal magic weapon though. I'm gonna see how many souls I can pop just to see if I have enough. Because we don't get Seath's soul uh, because he doesn't have one. Okay, how does that put us? Is that going to be enough? That's plenty. So once we've cleared him out, uh... What 
an incredibly smug thing for him to say. So the reason why his demand has changed so much is that they expect you to leave and come back in between buying all of his things. And, um... Basically just be like... I have completely forgotten what I was saying. Not, not that I am myself very much like Big Hat Logan, but I do strongly empathise with losing your mind. Um, there we go. Velka's rapier. Let's get back to that. But yeah, they expect you to have left at this point, and then when you come back, he's now being an asshole. And then the next time you uh, reload... Ah, yes, you see, that's sensible. However, I want to get uh, Crystal Dragon Breath, which you only get by letting him go hollow. Or, well, I guess, Crystal in his case. So, resting at Bonfire is usually enough to reload an area, but we might need to head back. Incidentally, the thing about the Ulusil set and the Ulusil Catalyst is that I don't like to go to Ulusil this early, uh, so I just don't have it yet. Um, but wearing wearing the Dusk Crown will, will definitely be uh, useful later when I want to boost my damage output for things like the Four Kings. Yeah, okay, he's still here. So um, when we come back, he should have disappeared, but I have to teleport somewhere else and teleport back. I want to take care of this now so that I don't have to come back to the archives later. Although, actually... No, I'm going to have to come back to the archives later anyway, because I forgot to take care of our good buddy, the Onion Knight. So, probably the fastest way to get to him is to jump to the Daughter of Chaos. This is taking a bit longer to load than usual, huh? While I'm here, actually... Hey, could you, uh... Thanks, babe. I wonder if Eingi has anything new. I don't think he ever unlocks any any new things for you to buy, but he, he can always upgrade your uh, uh, your pyromancy flame, which is useful if that's the kind of thing you want to do. Which I do not, because I disdain pyromancy. Pyromancy is an art for yokels and oafs. I'm just kidding. However, it is amusing to me that there is a there is a stigma against pyromancy and in favour of whoa, I nearly fell down the hole. Um, and in favour of sorcery because sorcery is refined and pyromancy is very kind of like gushy and organic. What the hell? Why am I looking at the screen? Oh right, yeah, that I want to change this. Finally, we will get some use out of the rusted iron ring. It's only been what. <sighs> Like, 20 hours of gameplay that it would have been useful for that I didn't have it. Whatever. But yeah, in the past I used to not I used to not buy Logan's last couple of spells. I used to usually leave him with uh, the crystal weapon. And um, I had the same with Laurentius and not telling him where we got the fancy pyromancies. The fancy pantsy pyromancy. I mean, yeah, the damage output is crazy. See? Sorcery wins again. Sorcery, one million. Flame pyromancy, like, two. Well, I mean, flame pyromancy is all pyromancy. I meant chaos pyromancy, but then I was also thinking of flame sorcery, which is a whole nother thing. It's a lot of magic in this game, guys. A lot of magic. I do kind of wish that if you got to a certain disparity between, um, Yourself and the NPCs, they would just leave you be. Oh, hey, it's Laurentius. I forgot he's down here. Oh, buddy. Oh, boy. Oh, my good pal. Well, this wouldn't be Dark Souls if I didn't have to murder my friends eventually. Which is a problem we often have in real life as well, it's worth noting. Well, that's all for him. The toughest of opponents, I can see why he died in a swamp. Not to be terrible to my good friend Laurentius, who I hate to kill, but a tragedy is a tragedy, whatever day it strikes. 
Now around here somewhere should be another NPC, our good old buddy Siegmeier. The game is not specific about giving you ways to save them. It is incredible. The ways to save them are incredibly convoluted and arcane. If your friend is like, hi, I'm super interested in sorcery, sorc uh, pyromancies. Pyromancies are my favorite thing in the world. I notice you have a really cool pyromancy. Can I have a look at it? You'd probably just say yes and let him look at the pyromancy. You wouldn't be a dick about it. It's normal to, to give him the pyromancy. Brother, can you spare a dime? All right, that's fair. You did say specific. I will never get over the fact that helmeted NPCs talk muffled. This game is an absolute delight. Buddy, the will of Lord Gwyn exists only as a paper document that dictates what his children receive at this stage. Where is- there we go. I'm so glad I bought all of that moss. <laughs> that got pretty dangerous. Um, It might be worth going to Ash Lake soon-ish, but we'll come back later instead. Have I exhausted his dialogue? Yes, we have, I think. Which means that now, when we go back to deal with our friend, we can also... Uh, find Siegmeier's daughter, who is busy chilling in a golem, as you do. What the hell item am I using? Uh, Homeward Bone Wood. There we go, Wood. So, let's just double check to make sure that our beloved professor that we've met twice is in fact here. Actually, one of the things I appreciate about Dark Souls is how quickly you grow to care about these characters. It happens very fast, even though you only ever have like three or four conversations with one person. It doesn't take long to be like, Laurentius, I would die for you. I mean, it happens in the first conversation with Laurentius, but you know, most of the others it happens with fairly quickly. Get the drop on this lad. Nope. I have to murder this guy so that no one will ever know I missed his parry. It's a good thing I don't have an audience of nine people watching me do this. Aha, there it is, the golden golem. So Seath Hulk kind of has this thing about hiding people in golems for some reason. It's it's just how he do. It's one of his hobbies, I guess. And um, usually it's people that are inconvenient to him in some way. But uh, for some reason... Siegmeier's daughter has been trapped in one, so let's uh, let her out. The gold golems hit a lot harder and have a lot more physical resistance. Or I guess armor. Um, wowzers. So they are more difficult to fight, generally speaking. A chain of logic that I'm sure you'll agree is sensible. Oh fuck, that missed. Two soul spears is enough to stagger him, and actually I should probably equip soul crystal soul sorcery, although I might not have enough intelligence to use it yet. I think it's 40 and I have 36. Oh, balls have aggroed another one as well. Leave me alone! Oh god, a third one. Youch. We'll be okay, just gotta get up. <gasps> And then we're fine. Well, well, well. Boy, oh boy. What a pickle. I'm tempted to get a drop attack on them, but that really won't do very much to them. Um, guess it's time for the long game. I should have enough soul arrows for this to work, hopefully. <laughs> But it might take a while. Um, alternatively, I could rest at the bonfire, but then we have the risk of this happening again. Ah, yes, commonly known as the murderer's alternative. I was first introduced to this context, uh, this concept, when I was uh, a teenager playing Halo with a new friend I made at school. 
We went home and we played Halo and it was fun. And then he was like, it takes too long for you to rescue the Marines. You know that if you just murder them, you'll progress to the next stage of the game. And I was like, but we're supposed to rescue them. They're our, they're our buddies. Why would you murder the Marines? And he was like, it's fine. And then shot them all in the head while I watched. Which I found distasteful personally and vaguely emotionally scarring. I mean, this sounds worse than it was because it's just video game. It's just it's just some dudes in a video game. Like who cares? But um, it did feel weird. It's actually it's actually a tactic used by speedrunners now, but at least that's in service of something. Because um, it really is faster to just shoot them all in the head because uh, the game doesn't fail you for doing that. They just go, oh no, you failed to rescue the guys who were being shot at by the aliens. What a what a terrible thing. You know, nobody thinks to check whether the gunshot wounds were plasma or bullet. But yes, uh, just murdering NPCs is an option, and um, I genuinely can't remember if on this save file I um, decided to murder the Crestfallen Knight, because one of the things he tells you at the start of the game is basically, this world is a sad and bad place, and sometimes people murder each other for resources, which is kind of a hint to you, the player, that if you want some humanity, you could murder this guy. Which I don't usually do, because I don't like to attack host uh, non-hostile NPCs. However, on this particular playthrough, I have been doing that occasionally. Uh, the only other the only other option, really, for me is that I usually murder um, Lautrec, because just he kind of deserves to be murdered. And, of course, doing so prevents him in the future. Because you, one of the strange powers that you have as a player of a video game, if you've played it before, is that you have future knowledge, you know? You can, you can tell the future with perfect accuracy. So unlike thought crime and future crime in real life, um, in video game, if you know someone's going to do a murder, you can murder them first, and then technically, technically you've saved a life. So I guess on average you've both um, killed and saved someone, so it's a, it's a net, net, net zero, it works out fine. Um, okay, is there some way that you'll repay me? Can I have like a cool ring or something? Also, I'm not sure why this particular actress is doing the particular performance she is, but uh, she makes him she makes this character sound about twelve years old. I'm a knight just like my father. Depending on what and how you kill an NPC, uh, sometimes you don't get the drops. I think it. I think there's a. I think if an NPC kills another NPC, you don't get drops. I think if and then there's certain parameters under which particular NPCs don't give you their items. Well, go rescue your dad, I guess. But that's one of the cool things about Dark Souls. I've said this before, but one of the things I appreciate is that it's female characters, like, there's a wide diversity. It's okay that there's, like, two horny characters in this game, because almost all of the women are just wearing normal clothes, or suits of armor appropriate to their professions. There's not even any boob plate in the game. You know, the Dark Moon Knightess is wearing completely normal armor. Um, she's wearing bizarre armor, but it's identical to her dad's. So, that just leaves us with one more task to complete in this area, and then we never have to come back here ever again. Which is my preference, frankly. It's gonna take a while before we can uh, get the next level of that. Oh, uh, let's see if I can equip it. I don't think I can, but let's find out. Attune magic. Um, crystal soul spear, 44. No luck. However, we can do homing crystal soul mass, so I'll swap out the whole soul mass for that. It is really useful in certain parts of the game to have a, an auto attack that will just blast whatever gets near to you. And uh, so if we're going to be doing that anyway, might as well pick the more uh, damaging option. Time for me to die a shitload of times again in this horrible place that I hate. Love the parry damages I'm getting now, though. I 
think that guy's going to smash a table, and then he never does. Right, so my best option is to sprint through here real quick and get around to the other side before I have to deal with any of the fucking wizards who inexplicably are still here despite the fact I killed their boss. Ah, seriously? Come on, guys. This is not conducive to a positive workplace environment, I gotta tell you. I've been to a few different, you know, wizard colleges. This is just not appropriate, frankly. This is what is called a hostile campus situation. Which is quite similar to a hostile Krampus situation, but um, has subtle differences. Mainly the presence of hostile Krampus. Incidentally, it's weird to me that the Krampus has caught on in America now. Um, I blame horror movies. The main important thing is not to let him Krampus your style, though. Oh, a drop. Is it going to be another pointless crystal sword? Yes, it is. Not going to let this guy snipe me in the back of the head again. Boo! Why are you booing? I'm right. Who comes... Who You come here to my channel, my channel, and to, to criticise puns? I'm going to assume that no one should click that link. Um, I am a little bit too hands tied with attempting to fight skeletons to figure out whether that's spam or not, but I'm going to assume it is, and therefore nobody click that link. It might be tempting. Um, do you have script blockers on your on your browser? If so, by all means, have a look. If not, um, welcome to having some kind of terrible virus on your computer, or indeed in your life, much like coronavirus. Just in case that is a real person, I won't block them just yet, I guess. Uh, if you are a real person, just say so, and I, and I will leave you unblocked, otherwise I'll block you at some point. Is this where I need to- no, that's not the- I need to go down here. Yes, that's correct. Because I can envision a scenario where someone posts a funny meme in the chat or whatever. No reason to block someone over that, however, plenty of reasons to block people spamming in my chat. Which I, is right now what I've decided I'm going to start calling my channel. Ah, shit, no, I can't do that. That'll make it sound like it's like a, a 4chan clone. Nobody wants that. Well, not since Antslayer logged off anyway. In all honesty, 4chan is a horrible place to never go there. Poke, poke, poke. Right, now that I am freed from these horrible dipshits, let's, uh, wait, that's not where the lift is? How do, the f how do I get back up? Somewhere there should be a lever, I think, but where? Oh, I know where it is. I'm a fool who cannot remember layouts. Cleverly hidden behind a pillar, and multiple bloodstains. I wonder if there's bloodstains here because people stepped off and got crushed when it landed on them. Which is a mistake I can easily see people making. Let's Actually, we can just check. We can see. This guy pulls the lever and then he gets stabbed to death. Okay, I was wrong. My new uh, spin-off show, Dark Souls Columbo, will not in fact be uh, getting a second season. Oh, interesting. You can see my hair poking out from under this hat. You can't normally see that. Most of the ha most of the hats in the game cancel out your uh, 
your hair and you just have like blank a blank head underneath it. Uh, soul spirit, this should be fine. I should be able to murder him without much trouble. It's just occurred to me you might have to go back and see that he's left before you come up here. Oh no, whatever can have happened to my beloved tutor, Big Hat Logan, and his beloved Big Hat? Where could he be? Who, who could this stranger with a big mace possibly be? Look at that chubby pasty butt, wow, okay. Whoa, wowzers, okay. The main unfortunate thing here is that I didn't kill him with the first hit. Um, you know what they say, when you come at the king, you better not miss? Well, this guy might not wear a crown, but he definitely has headgear. Oh, interesting, this is the last one for I actually rested at. <laughs> of course, I always forget that it's cut off from the others, because Seath can do that, apparently. His understanding of the mystic underpinnings of the world is so vast and great. I assume he has a firekeeper in a box around here somewhere, and that's why that fire, like, wasn't out. Mind you, we did find a firekeeper in a box down at the bottom. Perhaps that's just what he did with the old one. Incidentally, anyone who does enjoy my Let's Plays and might in, might want to see a new one... Amazing treasure, really? Might want to see a new one at some point. Um, check my YouTube channel in the next week or so. I'm not sure when I'm going to start posting episodes, but I actually do have uh, about seven episodes of a new thing fully, fully edited and ready to post. The only reason I haven't started posting them already is that it's a multiplayer game, and I don't want my opponents to... Like, I don't- I can't trust that my opponents won't be smart enough to, um, look up my channel. <laughs> Considering I asked them for permission, you know, if I include the, the multiplayer match they're in. Therefore, uh, I don't want to risk that one of them might remember that and look it up, so I'm gonna wait until, like, turn 30. Um, or it's like turn 15 now, so it shouldn't be too long before I can start posting, but, um... Why am I here? Where am I going? I'm going this way. I can ignore that guy. What is it? Where is it? How it affect me? And other philosophical questions. As I, as I most recently demonstrated on the other end of the uh, equation, if you come for the king, don't miss. Now how the fuck do I get down there? Oh, I have to go down and around with the, the thing and the what's it and the roundy bouty. <sighs> Which is what I've decided right now that switchback stairs are called. This, this is a roundy bounty. And this, this is a ruffian. It's amazing that I can kill these guys in three hits instead of like five now that I've upgraded this thing. I always forget how much of a difference it makes. Oh, right in the face. That's exactly where my post-COVID chest pains happen. What a, what a fascinating coincidence. Right there, Doctor. Yeah, more good skeleton noises in this game. Right, okay, let's try this again, and this time we shall not miss. In fact, if I cast crystal thingamajig myself before I run in. They should blast him and then uh, we should be alright. So anyway, I started blasting. Dot JPEG. We have to do it fairly close to the actual arena though, because um, otherwise they'll bump into the walls and cancel, because as you can see, these don't last forever and they disappear if they bump into something. I really like the Crystal Soul sorceries, actually. I think that if um, Homing Crystal Soul Mass was... If there was a, a Dark Souls-themed bedside light that was just one of these hovering, I would probably buy that. Not least because I'd want to be like, wow, how did you create a... Magical doodad like that. Yowza. Okay, this is him. For, this, is, this is the end of him. Quick glimpse there of his... Um, 
impressive old man physique. So now we have his good stuff and we can grab something from here, which is the large magic ember, which lets us get enchanted weapons, which is generally the best option for um, picking a, uh, a scaling weapon as a sorcerer. These were players who got turned cursed by the, the big dragon when he was here previously. Yeah, I know, it's kind of sad, really. He's got this whole thing about magic and with his, oh, sorcery, the, the pure art, the brilliance of sorcery. What a, what a good thing to exist. And I'm just like, stab. Once, once, again, once again, I am the back alley sorcerer, you know? I cast organ damage. So if we grab this in Homeward Bone, we should be able to grab the other thing which is that there will be a chest with his gear in it now that we've killed him back where he was previously. Oh, God damn it! I've just realised I forgot to rest at the right bonfire again. Once again, I cannot escape this bonfire. It's terrible. Gravity draws me back to it forever and ever. I, I mean, I did use a... Oh, um, he's he's up in there because that's like his cool work chamber where he's doing his wizard shit. Um, and you show up and he's like, haha, I'm immortal, time to die, dipshit. Uh, and then he kills you and because you're an undead, he knows you're going to come back to life. So he has a special chamber prepared just for you that has a bonfire in it, knowing that as an undead, you'll come back to life and instinctively be like, ooh, a bonfire. I love bonfires. I'll rest at this. But then having rested at that bonfire, you can't, you know, you'll respawn at that bonfire forever. So then you're just trapped in that cell forever. Um, when you fight him down in the crystal cave, that's because he's like, well, some assassin tried to just kill me. Time to go check on my, my, my super cool magic crystal that keeps me immortal. You know, just in case he somehow did some damage to it. Get exploded. So that's why he's immortal when you first fight him, and why you can render him mortal in the second fight with him. Now where the fuck do I need to go? Oh yeah, down here. But yeah, that's that's basically why there's the difference between them. I love how often I kill things by stabbing the air next to them. We've definitely talked about this previously, but... Um... I personally think that these hollows are basically just held together by, by vol sheer volition at this point. So, you know, they think they've been stabbed in the kidneys that they don't have anymore. And they're just like, well, guess I'll die. As would be appropriate if I had kidneys. His crystal is not that poorly secured, if you think about it. His crystal is in a big cave full of incredibly powerful monsters of his own creation, uh, all of which are sitting there guarding his crystal. Um, additionally, in order to reach that part of the uh, crystal cave, you have to traverse invisible bridges, and I'm about to die again. You have to traverse these really dangerous invisible bridges um, safely. So generally speaking, it's a really... I assume a clam would not be able to bump into it and break it. I also assume that the clams are not allowed in that room. That is, that is, no clams allowed. Um, big dragon guys only. Or well, dragons only rules, if you will. But I mean, the clams mostly kill you by lifting you and throwing you. So um, I, I feel like if a clam just bumbles into that thing, it's probably fine. Um, wait, no, I wanted to go down here. Ah, balls. Become a streamer, they said. It's okay that you have ADHD, they said. Immediately before I forget what I'm doing and what I'm saying constantly. Yeah, exactly. They're just really well house trained. They know that, they know that antechamber is yes, crystal chamber is no. Oh, there is a fucking moth in my face. Um, that's gone now. <laughs> <laughs> flying between me and my microphone suddenly. Now, this is probably the only staff upgrade we're going to use in the entire game. The Sorcerer's Catalyst is not actually that 
effective. Oh, sorry, it's not actually that weak. It's honestly, for most of the scaling points in the game, what you're going to be using. Unless you carefully plan the development of your character in order to maximize the capacities of one of the other staves in the game, uh, generally speaking, you know, you just use the Sorcerer Catalyst and then you switch to this Catalyst if you're going to have a shitload of uh, intelligence, which we are, because, well, we're super smart. See how smart we are? Look at that face. That's not the face of a fool. Anyway, that's all we need for this, so I suspect next time we'll go fight in Isolith. Uh, so... That should be interesting, probably. So if we're going to do that, let's start from the Daughter of Chaos, since that's the closest bonfire. I don't think there's any other, uh, other bits and bobs I need to fill in before we go do this. In which case, next up will be Demon Ruins and then Isolith with the boss Bed of Chaos, followed by uh, the Catacombs and the Tomb of Giants with the boss Nito and uh, the mini boss Pinwheel. Then after that we'll head down to New Londo and uh, the sunken part of New Londo where we'll, we will fight the Four Kings. Uh, before that we have to go... Am I killing Kirk? I have been killing Kirk whenever I've found Kirk. I can't remember. I think I've, I think I caught both of his previous spawn points. Uh, the next one is in uh, down here. So yes, I'm I'm gonna go kill him. He's just doing push-ups. This is this is how I do push-ups. It might he might not get much like lift out of it, but you got to bear in mind the extra weight of the egg sack. Um, but yeah, so that's going to be all for tonight. Um, if you enjoy my streams, make sure you drop me a, a follow. Um, make sure you check out my YouTube channel. Thanks very much to all of my Patreon patrons, and thank you all for watching. Remember, I stream Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 7pm UK time. Thanks again. I'll see you all later.